The Penguin Swagger is back. I am Dan Kingerski on the Pittsburgh Hockey Now and the National Hockey Now YouTube channel. The Pittsburgh Penguins locker room was as different as at any point as it's been in the last, let's call it two, maybe even three years. On Thursday night, they beat the Washington Capitals in Washington 4-1. to one. And it wasn't just the final score. Perhaps it is the accumulation of the last seven games including a couple of blown losses in that time, but they have points in seven straight, 5-0-2, oh, three wins in a row, all behind Alex Nedeljkovic. The Penguins played a little bit of a different game on Thursday. This was not the uh, up-tempo, four-check, get-after-it sort of Penguins that uh, they largely try to be. This was a little bit of a different team. Four games in six days, three and four, they probably didn't have the legs for that. But you would also think that this mistake-prone team that has scuffled, stumbled, and bumbled through the first 70 games would not necessarily be capable of the conservative, structured, but also aggressive sort of defensive structure that they played on Thursday. Well, we were all wrong. The Penguins stayed within themselves, within the system, even dropping to a 1-4 for a good chunk of the back half of the second period. Believe it or not, they stayed in their structure. They played to a couple different uh, strengths of theirs against the Capitals, or I should say a couple advantages of theirs uh, against the Capitals. The Penguins are a bit of a faster team than Washington, certainly uh, I think a deeper team. But what they did by dropping back was force the Washington defensemen, who aren't necessarily better than uh, they've been in past years, quite the opposite, I, I might say, forcing them to do a lot of the work to get into the zones by kind of staying in front of the Capitals. They were able to confront every zone entry. They were able to confront and keep to the perimeter the Capitals. What that means is Alex Ovechkin isn't getting a rip from the slot. Ovechkin isn't getting a lot of chances near the net. The fact the Capitals really... Uh, until that third period surge, we're nowhere near the, the Penguins net, except for a couple of quick hits, you know, in the first period. And when they did challenge, Nedeljkovic was certainly up to the task. He looks like a starting goaltender. The team, uh, you just feel it when you go in the room. Those long faces that sat there with their head in their hands for the last couple of months, over the last couple of weeks, little twinkle in the eye. Uh, they, they beat the Capitals. So here's how that breaks down the, the playoff race. They're one point behind the Capitals who fell out of the playoff seeds by virtue of the loss. So the Capitals, I guess, technically, uh, with the games in hand, the Capitals do have uh, one or two on the teams in front of them. It gets a little bit jumbled. So we're just going to go with... Um, bare bones bottom line points so the capitals are out the islanders by beating columbus on thursday night are in the penguins trail the islanders by two points the penguins trail the philadelphia flyers third place philadelphia flyers by two points so essentially the penguins are one to one and a half games out depending on how the tiebreakers would fall with six games to go Considering where they were, that's a, not a bad place to be. We put out the Twitter call, as we always do, for the Q&A. Uh, I will tell you, it's a little bit more enjoyable now than it was two weeks ago when it was a contest to see who could be the most negative and be over the top and, and burn it all down and fire everybody. Suspiciously, I'm not getting many of those questions right now or any of those uh, statements. But let's, um, let me grab Twitter here. Uh, let's see here. Roanoke, simple question. What do you do about Ryan Graves? Clearly the defense has some synergy going on right now and you'd hate to uh, disrupt it. Well, I, I hate to pile on Graves as a, you know, in, in a positive situation. So let, let's spin it. What do you do about P.O. Joseph? Let, let's turn the question that way. I'm a little more comfortable talking it, about it in those terms. Joseph was really good on Thursday. He's been 
really good over the last several games. He's stepping forward when it's appropriate. He's keeping plays alive. His breakouts, listen to the snap on that pass. And when it hits the uh, the tape of where it's going, it kind of makes that little click in the echo. You can hear it. He's he's just on point. He and Chris Letang, his, his mentor, landlord, have, uh, I think, something really uh, I don't want to say special. That's not the right word. They've got something good right now. And no, you don't want to see uh, that disrupted if you're the, the, the Penguins. Even the third pairing, as we talk about Graves, what do you do when he's el eligible to return from his concussion? Uh, Ryan Shea and Jack St. Ivany have been simple, solid. And I think that's all you want from your third pairing. I would suspect Graves comes back um, when he comes back. I think they have to send Ryan Shea down. I think that's I think Shea is an emergency recall. I think they still have a couple of recalls left. They've not been very good on uh, keeping the public informed of who's an emergency, who's a regular recall. You only get four regular recalls after the trade deadline. I think they've got. Uh, a, a couple left. I, I think Graves would be on a short leash because of, of his mishaps and gaffes this year, wandering away from the net. You have seen that simplistic hockey from the third pairing benefit the Penguins greatly. So uh, I hope that answers your question. On you know, I, I, I do. I, as a coach, I, I think Sullivan would be very tempted just to keep everything stasis. Just keep it going. Keep it going. Uh, let's call it a 50-50 shot if he follows through with that. Or defaults to putting Graves, who is more talented than Ryan Shea, back into the lineup. Uh, Ken B. Since there are no more back-to-backs, do you think Jari sees the net at all the rest of the season? Probably. I'm not going to bet on it, quite frankly. This really is an Alex Lyon situation from last year with the Florida Panthers and how they were just a, a monster in the final few weeks of the regular season. I think Alex Lyon started every game down the stretch for Florida. If he didn't, forgive me, I, I don't remember any that he didn't. I, I see Nadelkovich very much in, in that same role. He's feeling it. He was a little bit stiff at the start of the Capitals game, but he, he loosened up. He was absorbing pucks by the second half of, of the first period. Uh, I also thought Nadelkovich was really smart. You notice how many times he put the paw over the puck Thursday? He kept covering it, covering it, covering it. The Penguins kept winning and winning and winning faceoffs. So that that little keeping the play a little bit choppy in the first period when the Penguins didn't have their legs was, I think, especially smart, and it was a little bit of a, a veteran move from Nadelkovich, just the kind of thing that bonds guys, you know? They're just all feeling it, and uh, you don't disrupt that in, until you have to, right? Um, let's see here. Puck U, Detroit and New York Islanders seem to have easier schedules. My guess is the Wings take second wild card. Third division spot is probably between the Islanders and Pens. Do the Islanders have the tiebreaker? Well, they, they play the final game of the regular season. Let's consider that the tiebreaker, right? And I think both uh, are just about even with the um, regulation wins, too. So that final game of the season could be for all the marbles, huh? <laughs> Who would have thought that the Penguin season could come down to the final game of the regular season? Drummer Jamie, do I give any credence to Graves being absent leading to improved defensive play? Again, let's just put that on P.O. Joseph, who has elevated his game to a significant level. Uh, he's just been really good. Dylan, if the Penguins were to make the playoffs, would you start Ned or Jari? Well, duh, I think at this point, right? Uh do you trust Ned in a seven-game series, or would you lean towards Jari because of playoff experience? Well, I don't think Jari has a whole lot of playoff experience. A couple of years ago, Jari really earned the respect of the room. 
I know a lot of you don't want to talk about Tristan Jari in positive terms, but we're just going to talk facts and honesty here. Jari earned a ton of respect when he played against the Rangers on one leg. His ankle uh, needed six more weeks of healing, and he played in, in that game seven, and he was really good. I think he wore down a little bit towards the end of the game. The Penguins are also overcome by the pressure that New York crowd at all just sort of avalanched on them. And then when Pedersen's helmet went flying, you knew, you knew the game uh, was over. Uh, you dance with the girl that brung you. And if Nedeljkovic continues to play this well, the Penguins continue to surge down the stretch. Nedeljkovic is your playoff starter. Just as Alex Lyon was over Alex, or I mean over Sergei Bobrovsky last year in Florida. That's, it's, it's kind of simple. I don't think there's much controversy about that. But of course, when Nedeljkovic struggles, I think you will see maybe a slightly shorter hook to bring uh, Jari in. Here's a, a twist to the Nedeljkovic-Jari question. Seven straight starts. How much is too much when riding the hot hand? Matt Meager asks. I don't know. I, I suppose that's different. I suppose Nedeljkovic and the Penguins will... Find out, hey coach, I'm gassed. Or if the coaches see the goaltender's tongue sort of wagging a little bit, then I think you might see Jari. I mean, otherwise, listen, the adrenaline right now, the, the, the good feelings in the locker room right now, you're not nearly as tired. You're just going day in, day out. You're up here on uh, pretty close to cloud nine. The legs feel a little bit lighter. The back feels a little bit freer. All of those things, you feel just a little bit uh, better. So, uh, you know, I guess the Penguins won't know until they find out on that one. Yep, that's me. Asked a couple weeks ago, the Pens were fourth worst shooting percentage in the league during this winning stretch. Does it look like they're putting more simple shots on net? Interesting. I don't necessarily think they're shooting more. I think they are getting to the net more. I think they are battling on the wall a little harder. I think they're getting a few more pucks. I think they're fishing them out. I think the defensemen are playing better with the puck at the top of the zone. They're taking the top of the circles, which pressures everybody. That's when things begin to break down and defenses begin to scramble. I think maybe that's a little bit of a difference. Also, listen. Don't overlook the fact that until Thursday night, Sidney Crosby had 15 points in six games. If it looks like they're scoring more, it's because Sidney Crosby is scoring more. Evgeny Malkin also has a couple or a few multi-point games, uh, including a couple of multi-goal multi games. Don't overlook those things. I, I know they're not somehow... Talking about Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin aren't the flashy things, but those guys really have lifted the, the Penguins. It's You can cite your favorite uh, narrative, those two especially. And also don't forget how good Eric Carlson has been. Like how really good he has been getting out of his own zone, escaping danger and trouble with the puck, uh, turning defense into offense. That's why you have him. Uh, let's see here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let me see if there's any any new questions. Anything we haven't already touched on on this little Q and A here? I do have to actually. Nope. I'm gonna miss the final metro. I guess we're Ubering back to Bethesda tonight. Um, Dean says, looking at the last six games, they're tough. I think the Pens need at least five wins. I'm gonna put it at eight points, maybe nine, to get into the playoffs. 90 points, 89 points, because they play Detroit head-to-head, -head, because they play the Islanders head-to-head, -head, I, I think that's going to suppress the total. I think the Flyers are, listen, I, I thought the Flyers were toast at midseason too, and Tortorella sort of ripped them and ripped them, and they, they kind of came back to life. This might be a little too tall of a task for Philadelphia to, to put it all back together. I, I think they're breaking. I, I, I don't think they're that good to be honest. And, and the Islanders certainly have not shown any ability at any point this season to be consistent. Sound familiar. But while the Penguins are surging, the Islanders are still up and down, up and down. Uh, 
yeah, I'll put it at 89, probably 90 points. So that's that's eight or nine points for the Penguins. That's four wins and a tie, four one and one. Uh, even four two and one in their last six. No, four one and one, sorry. Yeah, I do math a lot. And uh, let's see here. Shea looks like a nice find. Maybe another Ruedel 6-7 D-man type. Yeah, I think that's fair for Ryan Shea. It's not, I, I think people put too many expectations when he made the team out of camp. I, I think, yeah, settling him in as a an occasional third pairing defenseman. Uh, I, I, you know, as Graves goes up and down, Shea is sort of steady, consistent. And so right now I think maybe uh, that's why Shea would play over Graves. All right, that's it. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, have at it. The Penguins, one point behind the Capitals and two out of a playoff spot. Who would have thunk that a few weeks ago? Certainly the room is feeling it. I'm Dan Kingerski from Capital One Arena here in the Pittsburgh Hockey Now and the National Hockey Now YouTube channel.